We're joined by Ray Suarez from Washington, D.C. Ray obviously is the senior correspondent for the PBS NewsHour. And Ray, thanks for being here. We, thank, we appreciate your time. You have covered the topic we are talking about tonight. And you've also written about the topic, uh, your book, The Old Neighborhood. Uh, I want to jump in with something you wrote about in here. Tell us, how do you see race playing a role in how our cities have developed, where we live? You know, before the Voting Rights and Civil Rights Acts of 1965, uh, before the fair housing laws, uh, race was a powerful, powerful sorter of human beings. Yes, you can live west of this street. No, you have to live south of that street, depending on your race. And in the decades that followed, money started to be more of a powerful sorter than race. I mean, race was still in there. You know, we've all heard the term white flight, but so you talk about something uh, black flight. What, what, is that, what does that mean, and, and, and what, why does that occur? Middle class, white collar black families that had been able to move ahead in their professions, make a little bit more money, uh, found that their mobility was stifled in a lot of cases. They couldn't move wherever their money would take them. So black flight began when that first mobile group started to leave the ghetto. At the same time, commercial interests from outside those traditionally black neighborhoods started to move in. So black grocery stores disappeared. Black insurance companies disappeared. National chains began to buy black funeral homes. Uh, national grocers started to move into the places where uh, black food sellers had done their business. Uh, on both sides of that, of the, of that time, was there a lot of fear? Was it, was it fearful for people to see this on their television screens? There was plenty of fear to go around, and some of it was well-placed. I mean, there, there was a lot of violence that accompanied what ended up being a fairly wrenching social change. A hundred years of post-Civil War custom and brutality and the use of money to deny people their rights had created um, a widely distributed worry about everything that was going to accompany the changes that were being promised by the 1960s. People had a sense that this was not going to be a cost-free proposition. I think I may be a little older than you, but I remember uh, turning on the TV as a kid and seeing those water cannon and seeing those dogs and seeing blocks on fire and thinking, the world is flying to pieces growing up in a country like this wasn't necessarily going to be such a great proposition, especially when you're one of the people that other people are moving away from. Just wanted to get your thoughts on education and race and from your reporting. How do you see that playing out? Because it's not just our neighborhoods. Suburbs have for a long time been able to take advantage of the presumption of the excellence of their schools. So even if people don't take the time, to look at the standardized test scores of one particular district or another. If you just have them stand on the curb at 315 and watch kids pouring out the door, they will have an impression already of which school is quote unquote a good school and which school is quote unquote a bad school based on who the kids are. What role did, uh, did our press, did our media play uh, in the 60s? And, and, what is, and what, what's the role now? Most big city newsrooms were in the center city. They were near the civic center of, uh, of any big marketplace. So out of laziness and out of geography, urban crime got covered more heavily than suburban crime. Are we repeating any of our history with other racial minorities? Uh, now immigrants are very heavily starting their lives in suburban areas, in part because that's where the jobs are. So we're creating a new model for assimilation and acculturation. Also, a new economic class is moving into center cities, uh, reclaiming neighborhoods that were abandoned, sometimes by their own parents and grandparents, uh, 50 and 60 years earlier, uh, when people were fleeing for the ex exits. Now their own educated, white-collar grandchildren are uh, recolonizing underpopulated neighborhoods. Are we headed to a post-racial uh, society that we all kind of dream and talk about when you're talking about the next generation coming back into that city, city center? Americans are more than ever where they want to be. 
uh, journalist Jim Bishop wrote a wonderful book called The Big Sort, where he described this process where uh, young couples that wanted to live in city centers moved there. Uh, young families that wanted to get out of the cities where they their families had been for 50, 80, 100 years got out. Everybody is, through the magic of money rather than melanin, where they want to be. Ray Suarez from the PBS NewsHour, senior correspondent. Thank you for your perspective, your insights. It's a pleasure talking with you, and thanks for being on. Stay tuned. Great to be with you.